No one has more state pride than New Mexicans. The vibrant culture, bold flavors, unique history, and dramatic landscapes under our Zia sun are like no other. And the people of New Mexico are a rare breed. As diverse as we are, together we breathe life and soul into this high desert land, a land that promises adventure. I'm Michael Newman, and as your host, I'll be taking you with me as I seek out the best the land of enchantment has to offer. New Mexico makes it feels like home. Thanks for watching another episode of New Mexico True Television. I'm your host, Michael Newman. In this episode, we're exploring New Mexico's wild, rugged west. Yeah! From its cliff faces for climbing and canyons for riding, we venture through the New Mexico Highway 60 corridor to take in the sights, sounds, and flavors of this great western landscape. Seven miles west of Socorro and just over an hour south of Albuquerque off I-25 and New Mexico Highway 60 is a premier rock climbing and bouldering destination, The Box. Some friends of mine who are avid climbers hold this among their favorite spots, and fortunately for me, they're taking me with them today. Now, let me just say, I'm a novice. My experience thus far has been limited to a rock climbing gym, but Irene and Matthias have assured me the box is suited for the full spectrum of climbers, even beginners like myself. So yeah, Michael, this is where we like coming most because there's a lot of really nice climbs. That's a major wall down here in the shade. There are a number of areas within the box for climbing, but we're headed to the southern box area for a route known as Alcohol Wall. Don't ask about the naming of these locales. As you become acquainted with climbing, you will soon learn a name including a reference to liquor is among the more demure of titles. I feel like this is the perfect getaway from city life. Yeah. You know, it's so remote and quiet out here. Yeah, totally. Um, the beautiful thing about New Mexico is that you can climb all year round. Right. Winter time, you can come to places like this, uh, south facing walls where the sun hits them, you can climb in the winter time. I think that's why you know, there's so many climbers in Albuquerque when you go to the climbing wall. All right, I think. Did we make it? You sure? Uh -huh. oh, this is a nice little wall here. Yeah. Looks like a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so right now what you have to do is to at least have as much, as many of these quick draws as walls there are, plus an extra two ones for the top. So you always want to clip the straight one onto the actual bolt on the wall. Okay. And the curved one is the one where you're gonna clip the rope through. After we go over some of the technicalities of lead climbing, Matias and Irene review the route for alcohol wall. All right, uh, you ready? Good to go? Okay, I'm climbing. And she's gonna climb straight up on this 5.9, which is called Bourbon Street. And so now I'm gonna give her a give her rope and she's gonna clip. You could always just belay her down from that highest point. Right. Okay. That's a lot of mental man. Yeah, there's a huge difference between leading, mm -hmm. that's what she's doing right mm -hmm. now, and following on top roping. Down? Yes, you can take me down. Slow, slow, slow. Uh, <laughs> you made that look so easy, huh? <laughs> well, I hadn't climbed outside in a long time after my surgery, so right. it takes a while for the head to start functioning again. But right. yeah, it's an easy, easy and enjoyable climb. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Good job. All right, you're good. Nice. You're good to go. Yeah. Climbing. Climb on. Remember to smile. <laughs> remember to smile and remember to go up. <laughs> Just my, when my yoga kicks in. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. It's very useful. Most climbers do yoga, for sure. Reach your hand right in there. Nice. Okay, you have a hole a little bit to the left, in there, a little bit right. right. Like, look for your foot placements before you actually climb up, because right. obviously afterwards it's harder to see. <sighs> I need a little break. Good job. That's it. Nice. Nice, nice. job. Come Fire on, go for reach. it. Left hand, a little bit of something to keep you on the wall. He's at the top. I'm nice. at the top. Good job. Woo! 
Coming down slowly, okay? Relax, you're fine. Put both feet on the right of the rope, to the right of the rope, switch, yeah, there. exactly. All right, Thais, you had my life in your hands and you took care of me. So I appreciate that, I owe you one. <laughs> the box is known as a great winter climbing spot, but if you decide to go here later in the spring and summer, be sure that you get an early start because these rock faces get hot as the day wears on. The box is also known for bouldering, and if this is your thing, be sure and check out Alf Rig. Rock climbing can work up an appetite. Pop back into Socorro and grab a bite at El Camino Family Restaurant or pizza at Socorro Springs Brewing Company. Stay tuned for a taste of the great American West. Do you need a reason to hit the road? Find out about upcoming events around the state at NewMexico.org. Just under an hour south of Albuquerque on I-25 is the quaint village of Santa Acacia. This green valley is home to Acacia Riding Adventures, the horseback riding outfit that will be taking me for a day's excursion in neighboring San Lorenzo Canyon. A historic adobe schoolhouse serves as the headquarters for Acacia Riding Adventures. And with a slew of horses roped outside, dogs roaming and lazing about, golden light pouring through the cottonwoods, what can I say? The scene upon arrival sets a romantic precedent for what the day's adventures may hold. And against this picturesque backdrop, a flurry of activity is taking place. Horses are being fed, groomed, and saddled until the man in charge of this whole operation, Dakota, sets the choreographing the loading of the horses on the trailers. If we have a couple extra, we'll put those in the yellow trailer. With three trailers of horses and even more trucks compiling our caravan, we head for San Lorenzo Canyon. While the views are scenic and make for a pleasant drive to our destination, they give no hint to the scope of magnificent terrain we're about to encounter. Towering hoodoos and flowing striations of red rock envelop us upon entry to the canyon, and it looks as if we have the whole place to ourselves. Dakota's team begins unloading, and he takes me over to meet my horse. So this is Rumor. Rumor. He's a Tennessee walker, uh, black and white, he's a big, gorgeous horse. Um, he's smooth, so he articulates in his ribs when he's walking to the point where the foot lands to the back outside of the front foot. Therefore, the front foot's still on the ground when the back foot lands. Therefore, you're not getting that bouncing movement. Uh, okay. And that's what makes him smooth. And so we have a bunch of Missouri Fox Trotters, Tennessee Walkers, Kentucky Mountain Saddlebreds that are exceptionally smooth. It's probably going to be the most comfortable horse ride I've ever had. It will be <laughs> the most comfortable horseback you ever had. Ever. So, do I need my chaps too? What's up? Do you want chaps? <laughs> no, I was kidding. You got some red and black ones that go divine with those shoes. I mean, yeah, I bet. A little color combo. Dusty, Michael wants fringe. <laughs> I need fringe. <laughs> What's going to go well with my complexion? You tell me. Red and black. <laughs> red and black. Everything, OK. Working for Red Lady. Yeah, you know, I do it for you, you know? What can I do? I'm here for y'all. I'm here for y'all. <laughs> See what you started, Dusty. <laughs> All joking aside, it was finally time to saddle up and get ready to hit the trail. We have just started our ride when Dakota leads us into one of the area's incredible slot canyons. <laughs> oh, this is magnificent. So you can hike all the way up here. Oh, really? You get up here and hike all of this stuff. That's why they're back here camping. Little did I know how adventurous it was about to get. Around the next bend, we reach the portion of the trail where we'll begin climbing. 
which actually sounds like an understatement once we're underway. Dusty leads the way, showing us how to do it gracefully. We'll see how I keep up. This is where I truly see the advantage of riding a Tennessee Walker for this type of trail. Remarkable. We snake our way up to the summit, and if winding my way through the base of the canyon wasn't impressive enough, reaching the top and having the view from above, well, let's just say, mind is blown. Riding horseback along the ridgeline of this rugged desert landscape certainly evokes the iconic western imagery we have all come to associate with the southwest, specifically with the enchanting land we call home. It is poetic, powerful, and definitely one of the best days I've ever spent on a horse. Dakota and his team have allowed me to feel like a cowboy, if even for a day. Our horses pick up the pace, riding us off into the sunset. Or something like that. <laughs> the San Lorenzo Canyon by day is stunning but acacia riding adventures also offer sunset and moonlight rides, as well as rides in white sands. They are masters of selecting the most scenic way to take in New Mexico by horse. If you want to document your ride, Dakota has some great tricks and tools for using a GoPro if you bring yours along. And don't be shy, wear your fringe if you got it. So far in the series, we've taken you all over the land of enchantment to places we thought you'd want to see and experience. Now, it's your turn to share with us your New Mexico Two Treasures. All you have to do is send an email with a written description, or better yet, a video showcasing your New Mexico True Treasure. Who knows, we may even ask you to show us in person. Send your submission to True Treasure at cliffdwellerdigital.com. Up next, the small town where past, present, and future intersect. And now, from the pages of New Mexico Magazine. An hour and a half southwest of Albuquerque and only 27 miles west of Socorro, on Highway 60, is the historic town of Magdalena. Nestled against the mountains of the same name, the town of Magdalena and its time-worn, beautifully weathered buildings have a very particular allure. Structures here serve as a reminder to the years this town acted as a commercial hub for surrounding cattle and mining industries. The framework of the stockyards where thousands of cattle were ushered after making the journey on the Huff Highway stand quietly in the center of town. And the landmark Santa Fe Depot and adjoining historic boxcar are evidence of the railroad spur line which designated Magdalena as the trail's end, where cattle and rich ore from neighboring regions came to be shipped nationwide. The textures of distressed wood and rusted metal, along with the sheen of fresh coats of paint on refurbished buildings throughout town, create the perfect mesh of past and present. Truly a crossroads of great Western history and the scientific frontier of today, Magdalena sits smack between the VLA and the Magdalena Ridge Observatory and is the ideal location for the star parties it hosts twice a year. But beyond its appeal to lovers of astronomy and the skies, this town is also known for its growing art community. And the first Saturday of every month, Magdalena hosts an open house with studio tours so visitors can get a personal introduction to the town's art and artists. Housed in the old bank of Magdalena is the Village Press Print Studio, my first stop on my studio walking tour. Did I catch you doing work? Oh no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was working earlier, but uh, oh, not right now. This is a gorgeous space. Well, thank you. It's fun to hang out here. I have to tell you, I, I know nothing about printmaking whatsoever. So giving me a little insight into what this is about or how one goes about printmaking in the process. There's a whole vocabulary that goes <laughs> along with uh, letterpress printing. This is called a chase. The chase fits down into this platen press. Lori breaks down the basics of printing for me and then actually offers to give me a hands-on experience at the press. <laughs> okay, and you're gonna tell me if I do something wrong because I don't want to mess up of course, my really hands or the that. machine. <laughs> you're gonna step, step on? on the pedal. Okay. 
Power through. Power through. You might want to keep a hand on it. Lightly so it doesn't flip back over into the pink. But. And you can see how each one is individual. They have some of the, the creases and some of the inconsistencies There's that make history. it perfect. Yeah. There's history in this. I like that. <laughs> this moment will never happen again. And so, therefore, this piece of art is one of a kind. There you go. All right. Except for all those that are laying there. <laughs> I'll definitely be back. Okay. Okay. Good. I'll All right. On that. And I'll have to bring my own design next time. Yeah. <laughs> After leaving Lori, I head down the street to the former Badger Bruno Warehouse, now the home of Art Space Warehouse 110. For such a rustic building, it has exquisite contemporary art. I talk with proprietor Catherine and the Venezuelan artist Mary, whose work graces the walls. Uh, tell me about this art. I I'm interested to, to know what it is, what it's made out of. It's super vibrant and it's like alive. So can you tell me about the process? Okay, sure. Well, what Mary is doing here is she works with crude oil. What she does is she applies crude oil to vinyl and it goes through kind of a process of morphogenesis where she incorporates the pigment and then waits until it gets to a certain point where she then stabilizes it with ethanol. And then the fibers that are on the top of that are, are sugarcane huh. fibers. So all these... And naturally occurring chemicals and, and liquids all kind of coming together in this mold. You are talented. <laughs> yeah, this is, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. This is yeah, great. Yeah. This is just an awesome space. I would never imagine to see this behind, you know, behind the building. Uh, so what is the, is, is there a history behind this building? It's always been a feed store of some sort, oh, okay. a feed storage area of some sort. Then when we bought it, actually, originally, it, it was a feed store. It was a feed, okay. tack, and supply store. But the original vision was always to convert it into an art space. Right. And so eventually the opportunity came and we, we, we decided to do that. So right. we're thrilled to have it and to share it with the community and to share it with people who come into town. Right. So, if those Cowboys could see it now. Well, they, you know? well, they, they do actually. They, do. they come and visit. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they come and see it, and they're kind of like, in, they're in awe, you know, and, and kind of in shock of yeah. the, the transition. Right. I, 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 that's mm -hmm. one thing that really strikes me about Magdalena. It's this huge juxtaposition. It's this gorgeous landscape that has such deep roots in cattle, you know, in the cattle industry, and it's all these things that scream old Wild West. But then. Mm -hmm. There's this thriving art community. It's inspiring. The whole community is very inspiring. As the sun begins to lower in the sky, I head for the Magdalena Hall Hotel, where they're kicking off this summer eve with the renegade country sounds of the Most McCormick Band. Now, the M&M Cafe at the hotel has some of the best food you can find in town, so you know you're in for a treat when they fire up the grill to make barbecue ribs for the first Saturday crowd. I managed to snag a seat up front and start digging the music and into my play. The town of Magdalena certainly knows how to deliver on all fronts. Mark your calendar for the first Saturday of every month when Magdalena has the open house art tours. And keep an eye out for the old Kelly mine along New Mexico Highway 60. And if you have the time, Magdalena makes a great launch point to other area attractions like the VLA and Pi Town. For more great stories like this from New Mexico Magazine, visit NewMexico.org. Don't go away. We're about to show you where to get the best steak in cattle country. Do you take a lot of pictures on your New Mexico travels? Well, if you do, show us by hashtagging New Mexico True on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just over two hours southwest of Albuquerque and only 60 miles west of Socorro on Highway 60 is the Eagle Guest Ranch in Daddle. In country that is equated with ranches and cattle drives, it should come as no surprise that a general store, gas station, hotel, restaurant, all-in-one operation in this tiny town at the edge of the San Agustin Plains serves up some of the best cuts of meat you can find in the state. For the traveler, this is the one-stop shop in Daddle. For the locals, this is the hub of the community. Before Eagle Guest Ranch, the main stopover point in these parts was the Daddle Well Campground, a watering well on the historic Magdalena Trail used for moving herds of cattle to Magdalena for the shipping on the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad. And as evidenced by the Eagle Guest Ranch, Daddle continues to be a welcoming spot to those making their way east or west in this stretch of country. Beyond the western relics adorning the walls and the cozy stone fireplace that greets you upon arrival, you'll find a salad bar housed in barrels with cast iron skillets for plating your greens. But aside from the ambiance, the big draw here is the steaks, T-bone and ribeyes being their specialty. The mere size of the final product would be enough to satisfy, but the other selling point here at Eagle Guest Ranch is they cut and grind their own meats. So your meal actually begins at the meat case where you choose your steak and see it cut before it makes its way to the kitchen. 
So what's the difference between hand cutting the meat fresh here? and otherwise. Once you cut it, it starts losing. Oh. It starts losing its quality. Here we grind our hamburger fresh every morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you order steak, we cut it right here. And what's your personal preference? You know, you got the T-bone, you got the ribeye, um, sirloins. Our <laughs> most popular here, which yeah. we, I mean, we sell like crazy is the ribeyes. Okay. Next to the ribeye, another bestseller is the T-bone. A lot of people like the bone. They say the mm -hmm. bone, you know, adds flavor, flavor adds some zest. Mm -hmm. But if you look at this piece of meat right here, this is probably the most critical thing you see. Mm -hmm. Is you see the white specks in there? Right. That's all your marbling, and you can see it in here too. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to make. That it means it's been grain fed. Mm -hmm for at least 60 days after the cattle have been put to market and everything like right, that. Right, right. Now, when you guys get this, it's gonna be uh, wrapped in bacon. Oh, wow. And basically, the, there it is. Oh, that's, that's like a perfect artisan cut right there. People in cattle country sure know their product, how to cut it, and how to cook it. As I savor my own steak, I take note of all the police and fireman's patches tacked to the wall from all over the country. Word has clearly gotten around that this is a spot to come when you're anywhere within range of Daddle. Jackie, co-owner of Eagle Guest Ranch, sums it up for me. So what's the slogan? Cold beer, good food, and lots of gas. Lots of gas. <laughs> the good gas that'll get you from point A to point B. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> it's up to you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for just some of the adventures along our state's Highway 60 corridor. Hopefully we've inspired you to make it out this way soon. And with that being said, what are you doing next weekend?